Coming up, a home energy checkup that can put money back in your pocket. Squeamish about donating blood? Hear from a dad whose story may change your perspective. And a network of safety resources is blossoming for older adults in Norfolk. The forum begins now. takes a little to save a lot. That certainly applies to energy consumption. So as you crank up that air conditioner, here is some timely advice. It's courtesy of Rob Richardson, who's Senior Communications Specialist, and Tom Jewell, who's Energy Conservation Program Manager with Dominion Virginia Power. And they did come down from Richmond um, to join us and let you know about this program, which is available year-round. Is that right, Rob? It, it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, people use energy year-round. There are some tips that they can use year-round in their house that will save them uh, money 12 months out of the year. Okay, yeah. but particularly now as the heat really starts to rise, um, people are going to start thinking about what can I do to lower my energy costs and uh, as a conservation manager, Tom, you probably have a few pretty good ideas. Absolutely, and right now with the air conditioning being necessary, mm -hmm. your, your bill is about 20% of your bill goes to cooling. Wow. Um, so there's some simple things that you can do to help reduce uh, your usage and still mm -hmm. stay comfortable in the home. Mm -hmm. One is to set your thermostat at 78 degrees and leave it there. People are going, oh, I don't know oh, about that I know. Yet. It might not be cool enough for some people, mm -hmm. but that's, that will keep you comfortable and save energy at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then the other things that you want to do is, is check for drafts. Mm -hmm. Some people might have their windows open just a little bit and not realize it. So if you check and see if your windows are locked and fully closed. Um, door sweeps at your front and back doors. Uh, keep the air out. So you want to keep the hot air out, obviously, while you're cooling your house. One would hope. Anyway, yes. there are some other quick fixes, too, that you can um, address that are just outside of keeping cool. And that might have to do with... Um Shoot your your water and what it takes to to generate all these other things. Um, and we have a if we put on the screen we have a little list of quick fixes that um, we prepared for you so that if you hear it and see it maybe you'll bring it you know take it with you. Uh, water heater tank wraps were one of them. Um, low flow shower heads. Yes. Yeah. Which, now why would that make sense? Well, why would that make sense? Well, because you're heating your water to take a shower or to wash dishes, ah. um, those sorts of things. So you, you want to reduce the amount of water that you use. A low flow shower head does that very effectively. Okay. They mentioned CFLs too. What's a CFL? It's a compact fluorescent light. Okay. And it uses about a quarter of the electricity of an incandescent bulb. Uh, typically, your incandescent bulb is throwing off a lot of heat uh, yeah. versus a, a CFL, which is producing more light from the same amount of electricity. I have noticed that, too, more recently than I did in the past, that those lights really do get warm, don't they? Yes, which they do. Which tells you that I still have some of those <laughs> lights. Um, okay, so, and, and then, of course, thermometers for refrigerators and that sort of thing, just to know that your, your appliances are operating efficiently. Correct. Right, and, um, and they're getting more and more efficient as we move on, but it still costs you money every month, so you have to pay your bill. So getting back to the um, program, it's a home energy checkup that it is you um, offer, and what does this entail? It's basically a walkthrough of the home. Uh -huh. um, so th the vendors will be looking at whether or not your, your air filters on your furnace systems are clean. Mm -hmm. They'll be looking at how many lights you have in your home and whether they are CFLs or, or uh, incandescent bulbs, so they'll, they'll change those out. Um, they'll be looking again at the door sweep. Mm -hmm. um, they'll be looking at windows, whether the windows are cracked, whether they're open, whether they're um, basically sealed. You want to keep your house envelope, is what we call it, um, uh, sealed as much as possible so that you reduce the amount of airflow into the home. Mm -hmm. um, they'll also be looking at your hot water setting. The, the correct temperature setting would be 120 degrees. That's plenty hot enough to take a shower. It's plenty hot enough to run your dishwasher or clean dishes by hand uh, without wasting energy. Mm -hmm. um, the, you mentioned the hot water wrap. That's one of the things we'll do with an older hot water heater. If you can put your hand on the outside of the hot water heater and it's hot, 
to the touch, you need a wrap. Ah. Similar uh, type arrangement for insulating the, uh, the supply line that comes out of the hot water heater. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the the program involves somebody coming to your home. Do you set up an appointment, Rob? What is how does it work? We've we've got a list of approved contractors on our website, dom.com, uh, and you can search a couple of different ways. Look for evil as a as a search term. Um, some keywords, conservation. Um, uh, there are other uh, ways to search for that. But you you find a approved contractor. You call that contractor and make an appointment. Okay. The contractor will come out to your house. Um, and, and do the things that, that Tom mentioned, that they've got a checklist. Um, it, in some cases, the contractor will apply for the rebate for you, for the customer, so that the customer, um, it doesn't cost them anything out of pocket. They don't have to pay and then wait for a rebate. In some cases, the customer has to a, a, apply for the rebate, but it's a, it's a very simple process. Um, it, it could result in a savings of sometimes up to $250 for the for the customer. Okay, so that rebate um, is, is a, I think, a, a good sell. So you, to get people to, to really think about this, they do get some money back out of what they may invest. But down the road is where they really reap the savings? A absolutely. You know, when you think about all those things that, that Tom mentioned, you know, when you think about um, making your home more energy efficient and, and conserving energy, mm -hmm. you know, you're going you're gonna to see um, that savings on your energy bill, and that, that's what's important to us. We, want, we don't want our customers to use any more energy than they have to to heat their home or cool their home or, or do the things that they want to do. And, and they will, if they pay attention to their energy bill, make some of these simple, you know, sort of uh, simple changes, common sense changes, they should see um, a savings. Okay. I know you can't always speak for the contractors since they are contractors after all, but um, how long does like this energy audit take that uh, they offer, generally speaking? It's pro probably about an hour to two hours that they'll okay. spend in the home going through the checklist and installing some of these measures. So oh, they, so they can put, take care of some of it right then. Absolutely, mm -hmm. on the spot. And that's, that's <clears throat> what's nice about it because the customer doesn't have to go to Home Depot or Lowe's or or another supplier to find uh, a low flow shower head yeah. or faucet aerator. Okay. All right, so an hour or two, generally any day of the week, um, and so plan a little bit to do it, but it's worth their while. What are they going to see in, in savings uh, percentage wise on average? That, that's going to vary by the home and also mm -hmm. by what we find in the home when we actually make those improvements. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be hard to say, but I, I, would, I would guesstimate five to five percent at least okay um, just by doing those simple measures all right and five percent adds up again after a long period of time all right well I we are running speaking of time running short on it so um, I want to thank you for sharing what you do now and have about uh, the energy home checkup and uh, hopefully people will take advantage of it by going to uh, dom.com slash Save, Save now, now VA. Yeah. So it does sound class. Okay, <laughs> now everybody now. all together now. Uh, so, <laughs> so hopefully you'll check out the website, make an appointment, and have your house checked out so you can save some money. And then thank you for joining us with that information. And I do have some more information, too, regarding um, staying cool this summer. And that has to do with a state program called Cooling Assistance. So families who are needing some help with their cooling costs this summer uh, can apply for the Cooling Assistance Program through Friday, August 15th. So they are taking applications now. If you call 664-6035, for an application, you can pick one up at any Norfolk Department of Human Services location, or you can apply online at www.commonhelp.virginia.gov. And also, Energy Share is a Dominion Power's energy assistance program of last resort for anyone who faces financial hardships from unemployment or family crisis. Payments go directly to energy vendors, and every cent donated goes to benefit those in need. The funds come from tax-deductible donations from customers, stockholders, employees, Energy Share partners, and Dominion in Norfolk. The funds are distributed through Salvation Army Tidewater Command. And again, that is a program of last resort, so check out cooling assistance first. And if you're not uh, eligible for cooling assistance, certainly um, this energy uh, checkup for your home is a really, really good place uh, to begin conserving. When we come back, we're going to give uh, you an idea of what it's like to give the gift of life. So a father will be giving his personal account of how donors have helped shape his daughter's life.
seconds. Hang on, just stand still. Just stand still. Just stand still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. According to the American Red Cross, two of the most common reasons cited by people who don't give blood are never thought about it and I don't like needles. Yet one donation can help save the lives of up to three people. Both Marshall Washington and Diane Kyrus represent our local Red Cross, but each represents a different perspective, and that's why I'm having them on the show. Marshall, um, his daughter, um, has been the recipient of blood and um, has a, a very uh, touching story to tell. Diane uh, works with um, the recruitment effort and understands why people sometimes feel hesitant to give. So uh, hopefully between the two of them, we can... Um, put together uh, something that will make you think twice about it before you say, no, I don't like needles. So Marshall, you uh, of course have a personal <coughs> connection to um, blood donation and this goes back a ways and it involves your daughter. Uh, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, my daughter was born 28 years ago uh, on the island of Okinawa. Uh, my wife and I were in the military and uh, just before her second birthday, uh, she had what appeared to be flu-like symptoms and uh, but with increasing pain and uh, upon s several visits to the emergency room uh, the doctors determined that uh, she had uh, sickle cell uh, disease and uh, she I, as I learned later was one of five children born around that time with sickle cell disease uh, but was the only one uh, to leave the island uh, alive if wow. you would and so it was a very uh, eye-opening experience very rough very difficult Mm -hmm. Very challenging. Okay. Now, when so if somebody is diagnosed with something like that, blood transfusions are a part of what um, occur throughout the course of this. And that, that's correct. Uh, blood transfusions has always been a part of her therapy, and blood transfusions, to be honest, has always made the difference. Uh, she was able to make the turn for the better uh, after receiving uh, blood transfusions. Okay. Which really just leads us to the whole idea of, okay, the blood needs to come from somewhere, mm -hmm. and m blood is something that we cannot manufacture, not outside of the human body. <clears throat> Correct. Um, there are so many people who can donate blood, could donate blood, and who don't donate blood. Mm -hmm. So um, one of our primary uh, objectives is to spread the word about how relatively simple it is and how incredibly powerful it can be to donate blood, to give literally the gift of life. It's, it's something that most of us can do and most of us unfortunately don't do. Mm -hmm. um, and Marshall's story is a prime example of how incredibly important it is. That, the importance of that is um, you actually work with the, the Red Cross as well, so you've yes. got um, a double connection here and uh, yes. being I, I would imagine that after years of this, that mm -hmm. that the idea that <coughs> giving the gift of life has just really become very, very central to your world. Absolutely, and uh, Diane is correct. It is literally a gift of life. Uh, without the blood and the donors giving of their time, uh, sponsors, uh, my daughter uh, may not be here. And uh, part of my responsibility at the American Red Cross is to train people to go out to collect the blood. And so I'm all, always mindful of the recipient, the end product uh, with what we do. Uh, for me, it is personal, uh, and I have a personal story, but I try to uh, interject that in, in uh, my uh, training method into my instructors as well. So okay. uh, I'm grateful, ever grateful for what uh, the organization stands for. Mm -hmm. Well, very, very human aspect of this, but of course, it's very human <coughs> to perhaps fear needles or feel a little funny about it, too. So how does one really, I, I don't know that everybody can, but how can one get beyond that resistance and, and really consider this? Because there are some practical, realistic things that people can take a look at and say, okay, 
you can do this. It's true. Um, we talk to lots of groups of people everywhere from high school students who've never donated blood before. You can donate blood when you're as young as 16 with a parental permission slip. So we do collect a lot of blood at high schools. And just as an aside, that's one of the reasons why it makes it difficult for us, particularly in these upcoming summer months. Yeah. Uh, high schools are out of session, and we do collect a lot of blood at high schools. But we talk to groups from <laughs> high school students uh, to senior groups and retirement homes. There is no upper age limit. Um, but as to how to get over the uh, concerns, most of the time it is so much less dramatic uh, a an experience than people build up in their minds. It's mm -hmm. the actual blood donation process takes less than 10 minutes. Feels kind of like a little, maybe like a little bee sting at first when you are first uh, having the needle. But altogether, um, once that settles in, it's something that most people find to be, that wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, and there are so many reasons that people um, feel that they may not be able to donate blood. There used to be restrictions against tattoos and so on, uh, not any longer. You okay. can have a tattoo even the same day, as long as it was done in a licensed facility in Virginia, North Carolina, and most states. Mm -hmm. um, there is, again, no upper age limit. There are certain medications, but mainly blood thinners and antibiotics that would prevent somebody from donating blood on that particular day. Okay. So perhaps it, maybe at a certain time of the year, you may not be able to donate because you're on a medication Correct. that mm -hmm. an antibiotic, for we instance, would We want the donor be a to be thing. healthy, mm -hmm. um, and we want the blood supply to remain uh, safe. It's, uh, our, our mission is sort of uh, dual in uh, making sure that we have a safe and adequate blood supply. Okay. And is there a universal, I mean, there has got to be a type of blood that that is needed more than anything and there's a good reason for it. Is that type O? That type O uh, is the universal donor mm -hmm. and uh, they can give to most uh, donors. Uh, my, my daughter is uh, type B as a matter of fact okay. and she's received quite a bit of type O blood so mm -hmm. Uh, typo has pulled her from crisis on a number of occasions. And I guess the need for it is greater because it is something that can be used by so many people. That's correct. Uh -huh. So uh, how does one actually go about uh, getting involved in donating? I mean, they have to set aside a certain amount of time and, um, and what have you when they do this. So what can they expect? We have blood drives throughout the community and also at donor centers, but uh, throughout the communities, throughout Tidewater, mm -hmm. uh, our region goes all the way up past Williamsburg and down to uh, North Carolina. Okay. But um, there are blood drives throughout the community, oftentimes at churches, uh, social groups, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and as I say, inst uh, educational institutions as well. Um, you can go to our website anytime. It's redcrossblood.org and um, put in your zip code uh, or a particular sponsor code if you're looking for a particular blood drive, and that will um, lead you to the blood drive that's closest to you. Okay. The actual process takes oh, less than an hour generally from start to finish from the time you register. You get a little uh, mini physical, check your blood pressure, your temperature, uh, et cetera, and your iron level. And then you actually donate blood, and then the, the big payoff is the cookies and juice that you get afterwards at Canteen. Okay. Um, it's, most people uh, look forward to that uh, step, and it's also an integral step in the blood donation process. We want the donor to walk away feeling good and be reassured that everything is just fine. Okay, and one final question. How many people come back and donate again? What's the percentage of people that actually donate repeatedly? Do you have regular donors? We have, I, I believe the statistics are about 50 percent of our donors are regular donors, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that we have the retention rate we would like to see. A okay. lot of people donate blood for the first time or the second time and think of it as an annual thing, but no, you can donate blood every 56 days, which is approximately every two months. All and right. if, if all of our donors came back a couple of extra times, we would be in good shape. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's a good. Uh, that's good information to, to finish up with. So hopefully, if you will consider it, um, these are kind people. They really want to do a good thing. And in the case of Marshall Washington and his daughter, you know, it's it's mm -hmm. changed his family's life and mm -hmm. has um, and has helped his daughter in ways that nothing else could. Absolutely. So and it's all because of um, the gift.
of life. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And up next on the forum, Prime Plus Norfolk Senior Center, Norfolk Fire Rescue, and Norfolk Triad build a safety net for older adults. America. Excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Building a network of safety resources for older adults sounds like a great idea, and in fact, it's taking shape as I speak. Lynn Berg, who's executive director for, Front, for Prime Plus, Norfolk Senior Center. Um, we have uh, Beth Brunner, who is with Norfolk Fire Rescue, and Brian Williams, Norfolk Sheriff's Office Triad, um, are also he uh, here to talk about their collaboration um, yes. and bringing information to older adults in the community. Um, and it seems like such a no-brainer, but... <laughs> the, the resources have been there, but it's always the question of where do I go to find them? I don't even know what to ask for. And this uh, solves part of that problem. Well, we are really happy to be here today, Jan. You know, as Prime Plus, um, Norfolk Senior Center provides programming for seniors, the adult daycare, the nutrition program, active adults, and, and even Ask Prime Plus that goes ahead and helps people find solutions for individual problems. We meet with lots of folks throughout the community who help us to connect with those resources and know more about what's available. And in our discussions recently, as we get together to talk about these things, it became very obvious to us that we are all able to provide resources, but why not put it all together and make one handy packet for those that we are serving? Because our mission is to serve all of the same population. And so with Beth um, to help kind of pull some ideas together and then with the contributions from Triad, we have done just an amazing job of putting together a senior resource partnership packet. And it will look like this. Mm -hmm. And inside it will have a plethora of information about those kinds of services that um, are out in the community and resources for seniors to take advantage of. And here's just a sampling of some of those items. That's and beautifully they, presented, by the way, Lynn. Well, I thank just you. love the way you put that together. And yes. I have to tell you, I have lots of great things to work with because I have great people supplying them. Yeah. So um, maybe, Beth, you could tell a little bit about what, you, what you've contributed. Sure. Um, both the um, Norfolk Police Department, Norfolk Sheriff, and Norfolk Fire, we all participate with the File of Life program. Mm -hmm. And this is important for the person in the household that might have a medical condition. This card is filled out prior to needing 911. It's kept on the fridge, magnetized. Mm -hmm. If the person lives alone and they're afraid that maybe they'll be unconscious when we get there, they can put this on the door to say, look out, it's on the fridge. We get there, we're able to grab the card, now we can expedite their treatment, and this card goes with us to the hospital. There's no more going around to their bathroom, bedroom, kitchen, getting their medication, mm -hmm. having to find their wallet, or go in their purse. Mm -hmm. Well, and it makes perfect sense. And, and you have, uh, with the Sheriff's Office and Triad, um, a very important role in all of this, too. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Triad is just a, um, it's the cooperation between the seniors and law enforcement. Um, we have mm -hmm. the police department there as well. It's the fire department ourselves. And um, once a month, um, we go out the last uh, Tuesday of the month, and we actually bring programs to the seniors, um, talking to them on various different topics, um, you know, about staying safe, um, things of eating well, uh, health and wellness, and we bring in professionals uh, to actually uh, teach them on these uh, topics. So we do this once a month. Okay, so you're all out there in the community, and as, right. as uh, mm -hmm. you had pointed out, Lynn, that that's there, but people don't always know it is, um, and that they each are a wealth of information 
right. and you can be drawn through this collaboration yes. that you have available and to contact Prime Plus in order to if you need a packet if you want information you just call Prime Plus at 757-625-5857 okay. and you can access one of these packets they can be easily mailed or you can come in and pick one up also we are going to be including all of the information about the Prime Plus programs that you may not be aware of and want more information on Okay. And as well as um, these folks contributing, the mailers are going to be really fabulous in that someone who might have a mobility challenge or transportation problem can still easily access the information through the mail. Okay. And we're happy to host programs like um, the meetings that happen for Triad and the trainings that Beth offers to Norfolk Fire and Rescue because this is a way that we can share with the community the fabulous things that are already here that can serve as resources for safety and to ensure great quality of life. Okay, it's, it's a wonderful idea and it's nice to know that Norfolk is working together to do this for um, older Americans or anybody really right. that needs True. the help. It doesn't even have to be um, age specific. Right, well uh, as, you, as you know, and I think I shared with you before, Norfolk has the highest number of elderly individuals, a majority of, of our population of elderly is at low or um, really um, fragile income. So what we're finding is that resources like these can make all the difference on whether someone's quality of life is maintained. Okay. And we don't have any territorialism. We can share information. It's a beautiful oh, community, and we are so fortunate to be together here right. to help elderly. Okay. Well, these are the pros, and they're involved with getting that information out. So, what better combination can you absolutely? Ask for? Thanks for sharing great You're information. So Check out uh, Prime Plus and give them a call if you want a packet or you know somebody who does. And thank you, my dear, for um, bringing all of these. Um, so this is just a sampling of what it is that they offer. But uh, give them a call. And thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next time. Bye.